Oh, now, okay. here's, here's what I I'm saying. I thought going to the other one. Now, no, no, no. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was directed by Edgar Wright, who did uh, Shaun of the Dead, which I enjoyed a lot. And in the film, uh, which is based on a graphic novel, actually, that's not true. The film isn't based on a graphic novel. The film is a graphic novel. <laughs> and that's part of the problem. And let's take a look at a clip where Corey actually wound up finding the only clip of the entire film that is like straight dialogue. Go. Why does everything have to be so complicated? If you want something bad, you have to fight for it. Step up your game, Scott. Break out the L word. Lesbian? The other L word. Lesbians? It's love, Scott. I wasn't trying to trick you. Hey, buddy, look. If she really is the girl of your dreams, then you have to let her know. You have to overcome any and all obstacles that lie in your path. You can do it. Be with her. It's your destiny. Plus, I need you to move out. What? Wow, now, that's exciting. Now, M Michael Sarah there plays uh, the guy who Michael Sarah always plays, which is sort of the, <laughs> which is sort of that that, that that dweeby guy who's so embarrassed and so shy, he's about to like collapse in on himself, and uh, he has fallen in love with a woman who is completely unattainable. Yet, for some reason, reasons that are never explained in the movie, she wants to go out with him. However, she's not going to go out with him until he defeats her seven evil exes. Notice how we don't say seven evil ex-boyfriends. There was some experimentation way back in college. Got it. That, 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 that's <laughs> what it. happened. Spoiler alert. S spoiler alert. Okay. So, um, because the film was directed by Edgar Wright, there is a lot of visual activity. This thing is basically a video game, a graphic novel come to life. When the phone rings, a little R-I-N-G emanates from the phone. Whenever he goes to, uh, to the men's room to take a leak, a little piss bar goes down as he like, continues to urinate. And what I liked about the movie is that when something is that chock-a-block with visual creativity, you really do have to give it some sort of credit. And there's a lot of clever stuff in the film. I did laugh, but I will say this. Who cares? You don't really know what she sees in him because the film is so, it, it's so tied to the visual aesthetic, you don't necessarily care whether he wins her over. It's really all about the next visual thing. So basically the movie is just a gigantic empty calorie experience that while c clever, and I liked a lot of it, and there's some fun in industry jokes, and, and it had a lot of great little supporting, uh, supporting parts, including uh, Chris Evans, from the upcoming Captain America, plays a super macho, uh, the super macho action star guy yeah. who shows up. He's one of the evil uh, ex-boyfriends. And what's funny is that when you go into the movie and there's seven evil ex-boyfriends, this is the problem too. Whenever there's like seven or ten of something, you always wind up counting it down. Always. You know. So there's seven evil boyfriends, seven evil exes, and by the time uh, he vanquishes the third one, and whenever he vanquishes uh, an evil ex in this big Street Fighter type fight where the final blow makes the enemy turn to coins that fall to the ground. By the time he's done with the third one, you're thinking, okay, he's done three, there's seven total. God, I hope there are twins involved. Because I can't <laughs> sit here for another four of these things. I got I really gotta say, but you know what? Uh, uh, it turns out there are twins, so I was very happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the movie has a lot of bells and whistles, and a lot of it is clever, I will give you that. And I think that if you're 13 years old, this film will be your first orgasm. You will have your first <laughs> orgasm during Scott Pilgrim Saves uh, versus the World, because that's, that's the kind of film this is. But it ultimately is an empty experience, and that was my problem with it. Now you didn't see it. I didn't see it because uh, I had I had crazy screening conflicts and a uh, whole bunch of stuff that I have to see because I'm on NPR on the 20th and the 27th. So I've got two weeks of uh, of manic screenings to go to. But don't you think like you've seen the whole Michael? Like, don't you think once you've seen one Michael Sarah performance, you've seen them all? Yeah. I've, I loved him in Arrested Development, obviously, right? Yeah. And uh, was it you pitched somebody was? Oh no, another friend of mine was pitching him when he was writing the new Revenge of the Nerds way back when. He was writing for Howard Stern, and they're like, we don't know who that is. So back then, and I mean, he keeps playing the same thing, and I'm kind of, and I'm just like, it's Arrested Development, we get it. And you know what? The, the the problem is because the film is again so dependent upon the visuals. If you're really going to latch on to the main character, he's got to bust through all that artifice. You got to really believe in this guy. He's got to bust through it, and that's not what Michael Sarah does. He sort of he recedes. He's funny, 
and I'm not saying he doesn't have his thing, yeah. but basically he recedes as an actor. Can, can he do, I mean, I haven't seen every Michael Cera film. Can he do anything else? Not really. I mean, Has he done well, any of the roles? Problem. Does he need to take an, a really independent film and that, do something different? Is it possible? Well, he, he's done independent films. Like right. That's all he, is that all he is? That gets into, a, into a, more, a dodgier area because the question is, can he do anything else? Does he do anything else? Is he being offered anything else? Are his agents even fielding anything else? I suspect that that they his agents are doing him a disservice by saying okay he's this guy every movie that has a, a part for that guy bring it our way that they want him to own that kind of a part but that's going to wear very thin and he's going to be too old for that he's going to be too old for that and what he should be looking at is how can i stretch as an actor as i age and do something i was just having this conversation today uh, uh, how the actors that really every actor has to know that whatever thing it is that you do there's somebody lined up right behind you who's two years behind you, who's younger and hotter well, well, and cheaper. cooler and cheaper, who's going to displace you. And you could become yesterday's news in 18 months. So your career could literally collapse as soon as the next one comes along. The only ones that have longevity are the ones who can adapt, who are character actors, who can transform, who have talent that transcends whatever thing it is that they have. The Meryl Streeps, the Paul Newmans, you know. These are, that's where you need to go. And Michael Sarah needs to say, who am I going to be in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years? What kinds of parts do I want to mine for myself? And then he needs to tell his agents, stop it. Stop working for the agency and not for me. You're, you're my agents, you know. And, and that's part of the problem too. It's a, it's a broad Hollywood problem that, uh, Agents now work for the agency and not their clients. But I think if you look at like Michael Sarah and Jonah Hill, yeah. and even Russell Brand and all those guys in Jesse that group, Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg, Jesse Eisenberg, I can has done dramatic Je parts. Jesse Eisenberg is like Michael Sarah with a little more Woody Allen. Well, the thing with the thing with Eisenberg is that I do feel as if he does have he does have a, a, an interest in drama. There's something a little more interior about him yes. that makes it, it, gives him a little more versatility, but he also keeps doing the same thing over and over. He does, he's the dweeby uh, Jewish guy that uh, he just plays. Who's, who's, a little, who's a little more neurotic than Michael Cera, but uh, a little more intellectual. And a little more real. Because the thing yeah. with Michael Cera is that as an actor, he's never, he's never real to me. Yeah. He's always that caricature. Yeah. Whereas Jesse Eisenberg, I think, can grow into a, that guy who is real and is an adult. It is, it is a very, very large problem. Yes, true. For actors of, of uh, the younger generation of actors across the board. Very true. Yeah. All right, so wait, that's uh, Scott Pilgrim Saves the World, which, by the way, I think everyone thought that uh, I would hate. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't hate I, it. Wait, you just said you... No. Like he has problems. Wait, at the beginning it sounded like you hated it. No, no, I he, said he it was... He has issues I, that's with not, it. I have issues. I said it was, okay, that's fine. It was clever, okay. and it was funny, right. and it was chock-a-block with bells and whistles, but, but ultimately calories. it was empty calories. It was but, an empty experience, huh? But a lot of people like going to the movies <laughs> for empty calories. I, I am not one. I used to get yelled at by a lot of girlfriends. Why can't you just enjoy it? Why can't you just have fun and, and let go and not think? Which yeah, I can't Because you were do. paying for it. I, yeah, I'm paying for it, and I like <laughs> yeah. to, I like to yeah. think when what, I go to the movie. This is one of those films where that people hate critics for. Although right, that's what I'm saying. Some people just want that. Some people want... And I like that you go, if you like that kind of movie, you like this. Yes, that is so true. The same okay. with The Expendables. The Expendables is empty calories, too. But it, uh, you know, it hits the beats that, that you expect if you go to see that kind of film, unlike The A-Team, which, if you like that kind of film, you're going to hate The A-Team. So, but I, I, I will say this. Before we move on to Eat, Pray, Love, I'll say this. To me, there was more genuine emotion in the scene in Shaun of the Dead where the main character has to shoot his mother. Remember yeah, that? Yeah. Because she's turning into a zombie. There's more emotion in that beat Sure. That the guy's got to shoot his mother than in sure. all of Scott Pilgrim. Because Scott Pilgrim is a top-down movie, Shaun of the Dead is a bottom-up movie. Shaun of the Dead is a movie that was c conceived by the artists, by the guys in it, who you know put it together and then got the money and it, it bears their vision. Whereas Scott Pilgrim is a movie that some executive acquired the property and said, we got to do this because the kids love it and look at the numbers and the actuarials and we can make money off this. And then you bring people into the mix, nobody who really cares about it, everyone's doing it for the paycheck, and it winds up being a soulless kind of piece of marketing. Uh, movies need to originate in somebody's soul well, and, and not on, at the top of somebody's uh, Excel spreadsheet.